This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Community Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Craig Weigdahl, and I'll be your host today as we spend some time with an amazingly talented young man. For those of you who have seen me before, today will be a departure from my usual format. For Hawaii's living legend lawyers, I've been interviewing attorneys who are nearing the end of their careers and have built legacies of helping their profession and the community. But today, our, sh our show is entitled Playing for Food, and I'm getting a chance to speak with an impressive local musician in a band that is on the on-ramp to what they hope will be musical stardom and success. Jesse Sharoma grew up here in Hawaii, in Hilo actually, a local boy. Together with Jonathan, Brian, and Ben, Jesse is part of the musical sensation known as Streetlight Cadence. From humble beginnings playing on the streets in Waikiki for change to buy food, Streetlight Cadence has traveled the world, has a regular gig at Disneyland, and is setting up to have its own television series this fall on K5. They've also managed to win two Nahoku Hanohano Awards and a number of Battle of the Bands competitions. If you haven't heard Streetlight Cadence's music yet, you're missing something special. Their songs are fresh, unique, and enjoyable, and they perform with energy, optimism, and a true love for what they're doing. Spend a little time watching these guys, and it's hard not to become a fan. We caught Jesse Sharoma in town, and I'm pleased to have a chance to sit down and talk with him here on Community Matters. Jesse, thanks for coming by today. Of course. Thank you for having me, Craig. And as we get started, and before I ask any questions, i got to ask you to give a shout out right now to my wife, Debbie, who is like your biggest fan. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Debbie, for supporting us all the way. It's friends and fans like you that honestly keep us doing what we're doing day to day with a smile and loving it every step of the way. So thank you so much. We can't wait to see you again. All right. Thank you very much. Now, you play an accordion. I mean, uh, an instrument that, quite frankly, uh, has been relegated usually to polka, which I think is, you know, was its highest mark. Did, did you lose a bet? Were your parents just cruel to you? Were you last in line to get an instrument at band camp? Or what, what happened here? Oh, man, all of those are better stories than the true story. <laughs> I, I wish it was one of those. Um, it all started right as I was leaving high school, moving to college at UH Manoa. I, was, I played piano before that, about nine or ten years, but you know, it was you know, parental enforced. You know, music rounds out a human being. So whether I loved it or not, they made me study piano, going through all the motions, and I fought every step of the way. Like, I was a brat. But after that, once I stopped at the piano lessons, I thought music was out of my life. Like, I thought band students were like the biggest nerds on the planet as I was, as I was in the robotics club the whole time. Uh -oh, I'm like, nerds. <laughs> um, lo and behold, though, fast forward a couple of years, I'm going into my freshman year of college, and I hear an old recording, and like an accordion was on it. It was like a vinyl or something, like Edith Piaf, La Vian Rolls or something. And I was enraptured by the sound of the accordion. Something just clicked. Love at first hearing, you could say. Okay. So I run up to my parents. I'm like, Mom, Dad, I need to learn how to play the accordion. I need to get an accordion. Really? Coming from someone who has not touched an accordion, much less seen one in real life. So, yes, the disappointment was real. My dad was like, you cool, you don't want to play ukulele or Hawaiian <laughs> slack key or, you know, something you have grown up around your entire life. You know, my mom was just like, where did I go wrong with my son? But um, after enough finagling, I was able to convince my grandparents who lived in Reading at the time to find like an old beat up garage sale accordion, bring it over with them with their next visit. Okay. And with that, I started um, the slow, torturous process, mostly torturous for my parents of learning how to play the accordion in my room and just making a racket. Now, I think a lot of people don't necessarily appreciate what's all involved with an accordion. I mean, we haven't seen one up close. Or, but this has, explain to me what you're playing. You're playing uh, piano keys on one side. You have buttons, like, I don't know, what, 450 or something, buttons on the other side, and then you've got to keep it, keep it moving in order to play. How does that work? It's not that complicated. It's, a, it's only about 25 pounds hanging off your chest with 41 key, piano keys on one side, 120 buttons about the size of like, you know, a thumbtack on the other side that you can't <laughs> physically see. You can only play by touch, um, combined with 17 registers, modifying the entire tone, opening and closing certain reed banks. All the meantime, the only way they're making any noise is if you're squeezing air through it at the same time. So much as a violinist uses his bow to make his accents, we have to use our bellows. You know, not that. Just that. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's not that complicated. How long did it take you to pick this up? You know, it's all, I believe you can pick up any skill, no matter how difficult it is, like within six months. 
if you're willing to commit the time to it. And so while I was going to school, I would come home, wrap up my homework, and just sit down and I would find you know, books on how to play it. I would look at sheet music. Thankfully, again, my parents having put me through piano lessons, I could read fluently and just, I studied. I put at least an hour every day in, you know, just mm -hmm. like dedicated practice, no outside stimuli. And within six months, I was, um, I was playing all the favorite songs I wanted to learn how to play and then expanding my horizons from there. And you moved that and parlayed that into being one of the members of Streetlight Cadence. Maybe we can see a picture of Streetlight Cadence up here. That's absolutely right. So during my, um, during my freshman year of college, playing accordion, um, one thing I wanted to start doing was playing with other musicians. I felt that playing with other musicians would give me an opportunity to expand my horizons. Um, that being said, I would and this is them, right? Oh, that's correct. That is us in John's Kitchen. Recording okay. the video back in our, our DIY days. Tell me who the members are and what they're playing. All right, so that's me on the far left playing the accordion. Yes. To my, to my uh, just right of that, is Brian on his cello. As you may notice, Brian plays stand-up cello. That is, he will literally strap his instrument to him so he can walk around and be mobile. Um, comfortably seated on the kitchen island is our fearless leader, Jonathan Franklin, on the violin. And at the far tail end, kind of tucked in the back, is our actually our good friend, Chaz Umamoto, who is no longer with us. He recently left, though, to follow a, a career in production. He's still a very dear friend, and we grab coffee every week in Los Angeles and complain about life like two old guys. Okay. It's great. Okay. And now, and now you've got Ben in there, right? Yes, and now just recently, just a few months ago, we added the ba uh, our new band baby, Ben, who is by far the most skilled and talented and lovable and likable guy. All of our fans actually like him more than us, but well, we're okay well, with that. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there, but... So, how did this all come about? How did you guys come together and decide we're going to make this band? And, and I mean, it's an unlikely group of instruments to pull together. You're absolutely right, and none of it was planned. It all began with um, our friend, my Jonathan Franklin, and our friend Daniel Duncan wanting to just start something for fun. No, nothing was created yet, but they put an ad on Craigslist. This must have been, goodness gracious, eight or nine years ago. Looking, they put an ad on Craigslist, and if I remember correctly, it literally said, looking for weird musicians or musicians who play weird instruments, something along those lines. <laughs> um, and as an accordion player in Hawaii looking for people to play with, it was really hard. Um, let's be honest, no one wanted to play with an accordion uh, player. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I did a lot of searching on Craigslist for months at a time, and finally I came across this post. And it being Craigslist, I expected it to be, you know, meet up, and it's just some, like, old creepy person, like, hey, man, this jam. But yeah. turns out they were right across the UH campus from me, it was this young guy, these two young guys who just wanted to make music, have fun. We kind of had similar music tastes and hobbies. And we started as a trio right there on mm -hmm. the sidewalks of Waikiki just for fun, make a little side money, maybe go to like Foodland or something and like get some like, get that like after 6 p.m. discounted sushi. You know, the kind where it's yeah. like they need to get rid of it, but so it's like, you know, questionably healthy or whatnot, but we'll roll those dice when you're in college, you'll eat anything. That's so. absolutely. Yeah, and it began there, and fast forward, you know, nine years, and here we are, and living in Los Angeles primarily, playing at Disney, Universal Studios. We have a picture of that. I, I think that's uh, picture number six. Can we take a look at a uh, picture of you guys playing downtown Disney? Oh, yeah, there you go. That's the downtown Disney main stage. You can catch us there later this month, actually. I, I thought I saw that on your schedule. So how often are you there? You know, we're very fortunate that um, we're there usually at least once a week. We can be there multiple times, depending if we need to fill in for other acts or if we're on, or if we're on tour. We might not be there for two, three weeks at a time. Yeah. And on um, rare lucky occasions, you can actually find us in Disney California Adventure for special events, food and wine festivals or other festivals and whatnot. So it's okay. just a really fun, magical relationship we have, and we're just really thankful for it. Now, you guys are centered in L.A., but you're traveling a fair amount now. That is correct. We, we moved to L.A. primarily because it's, it does make it easier to make it around the continental U.S. when we go on tours, travels, shows. Um, Hawaii will forever be my home. At the same time, that six-hour flight back and forth, if you're doing it every month or multiple times a month, it can honestly wear both yourself out physically as wear you out financially, So especially as an independent band, as you know. So moving to L.A., we did that about three years ago. We'll make three years this October. And... It's, um, it's, a, it's crazy. Like LA, Los Angeles is everything you imagine it to be from the lights, the people, the action, the traffic. <laughs> it's crazy, but you know, we love it. The, it. Our network of musicians and producers and friends has expanded exponentially. And it's just, it's a great launch pad as an international destination to get out to other places as well and facilitate those trips abroad. Okay, okay. Where this year, where, where are you going? 
Goodness, this year has been a whirlwind already. Um, we've been to Japan, uh, the Bahamas. Of course, always good to come back home here. We're going up to the Pacific Northwest, uh, potentially the South. Um, we're looking at Texas, and Texas is big, so that's going to eat up a lot of time. But um, really, we'll be hopscotching all around the country throughout the um, later rest of this year. When, and we saw you earlier with um, you know, John Cruz and others playing at the aquarium, and that was fantastic. What, a, what an impressive uh, opportunity. That was, it was surreal. Um, we look up, like, you know, we may have moved away from Hawaii, but growing up here, having the band start here, it's, we've looked up to the musicians here, these legends, these, you know, these iconic you know, paragons of the music scene who built this scene up and like, are just phenomenal songwriters on a national scale. It's the level of talent here is insane when you stack them up against like the mainland U.S. It's just us being on an island. That yeah. music takes a little longer to disseminate across the waters. But yeah, with um, so to play with John Cruz and to with you know Barry Flanagan, wow. it was for us it was, it's surreal. Like we will forever be students of their craft and like hopefully follow in their footsteps as long as we can. Well, they were very complimentary of you as well. That wow. was it was fun to hear you you get a chance to even play together with them mm -hmm. uh, on stage. It's, Thank you. It's like, what um, what keeps you guys going? Wow. Well, Debbie keeps us going. <laughs> it's, it's our friends and our fans and our community that rallies around us um, from the sidewalks to the stages. That just their support keeps us trucking. And to we do this to make friends, to lift people up. And as a DIY band, it's like you don't go into this expecting to make money. You don't go into this expecting like fame and riches. You know, it's. It's a fight. It's always an uphill battle. But we have our friends, our fans, and especially each other. Exactly to, to take collaborate. A look. Now, this is a neat, a neat photo in part because I think I know where you are there. Is, oh, yeah? is that at, at Mid-Pacific? That's correct. That's at Mid-Pac. Tell us about what you did there. Oh, we had this wonderful, it was like a, it was like a combination of workshops, symposium, ending with a concert. And we just spanned so many fun topics. We had John teaching them how to write a song, how to play their violins like ukuleles to strum them. We had Brian teaching the cellists how to strap their cellos up and, you know, create the next generation of stand-up cellists. And it all culminated with this fun concert at the end. And to see these kids growing up and just performing these songs with us, it was so cool. And hopefully, like, we want to show them that you play these classical instruments and they seem, you know, they may, you may be locked. A lot of kids think they're locked into that world of classical music, but you can do anything with it. And look at what we're doing now with a violin, cello, and an accordion. So really, like, the options are limitless and we hope to leave that lesson with them and that they will take what they've learned and just do incredible things. All right, well when we come back I want to talk about the television series that's mm -hmm. coming up and where you guys are going from there. You're watching Community Matters and I'm talking with Jesse Shirola of Streetlight Cadence. We'll be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening guys? They told me they were making music. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it. Do you want to be cool? me if so watch my show on tuesdays at one called out of the comfort zone i sang this song to you because i think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool and i want you to come watch my show where i bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier happier build better relationships and make your life a success so come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you then. Well, welcome back. I'm Craig Wagnall, and you're watching Community Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm sitting here with Jesse Shiroma of Streetlight Cadence. We've How's been talking going? about some of the neat things that Streetlight Cadence has been doing. I want to talk a little bit about where it's going now, because it, we got some exciting stuff coming up this fall. We sure do. Tell me about play, playing for food. We'll play for food. We'll play for food. I'm sorry. We'll Play for Food, which is going to be airing uh, this fall on K5. That's right. And it is a reality TV show. What, what, what is it involved? How, how did you get this? And Goodness what are you doing? gracious. So We'll Play for Food is our brand new TV series airing September 26th at 7 p.m. every Wednesday right after the news. And 
It's the culmination of a lot of things. Um, it's a culmination of over a year of effort. And let's see, where to begin with that? I guess, well, it just occurred to us as a band, having done this, we're an in, completely, we're independent, no manager, no booking agent. Some would say we're unmanageable. But um, as an independent <laughs> band, <laughs> we've always okay. had to find interesting ways to survive, to get by, to squeeze through to the next goal, you know, to hit to that next, um, tra uh, the next goal post. And so that would end up with us traveling on our own dime, figuring out, int figuring out interesting ways to travel, whether it's flying into Houston, Texas and stealing John's mom's minivan to like drive across th the country, or you know, walking into restaurants late at night and asking, we'll play, we'll play a half hour set if you'll feed us. These little adventures, you know, they, they always happened and we would, we would remember them, make for good memories, good stories. And it occurred to us that, you know, this, like, this could be, this could be great. This could be an, ex this could be another form of art to share our story, to inspire people, to lift people up. And we've also learned in this day and age as musicians, um, TV is a wonderful source of getting your content out, to get your material out, your songs, your music. And we go to all of these festivals with, you know, musicians just starving to get their music on television. They'll meet music supervisors and be, please listen to my album, please listen to my music. I think this would go great in your new television series airing on this big network. It's kind of the big hot thing now to get your music on television shows. And we've gone to so many of these conferences and expos and that we've always heard the same story over again. How do I get my music on there? And, um, and it occurred to us, well, if everyone wants to get their music on a TV show, let's make our own TV show. Yeah. And we can put our own music on it. It's just, as a band, we've always, coming up from the sidewalks, every challenge has a gatekeeper. Whether you want to play in a venue, there's someone there saying, no, I don't like you guys. And because I don't like you, you're not going to get, you're not going to play this venue, or you're not going to get this gig, or you're not going to be on this network, or you're not going to, I'm not going to use your music on my TV show. And we have nothing against the gatekeepers. We see that as, we see that as a challenge. And mm -hmm. as such, you know, with no hard feelings, we always will find our way around it or, and over it to keep going towards our goal. That being said, you know, no one wanted to place our music at the time being on a TV show, so we figured, well, we'll make our own TV show. Okay. And we'll just do it ourselves. That being said, is um, here we have the advent of We'll Play for Food, which is the synthesis, you could say, of, if you're familiar with the show, The Monkeys, the shenanigans yes. of The Monkeys and the music, and um, parts unknown with the late, great Anthony Bourdain. And because there are enough, there's enough reality TV shows out there you know, with rock and roll bands on the road, you know, partying it up, just making complete fools of themselves, you know, wrecking places or just being like complete nincompoops and making yeah. a scene, like living the fast, hard rock and roll life or whatever, the star life. We want to be as far from that as possible because we love our music, we love what we do, but we also love where we go and we yeah. want to respect the places we visit and we want to learn more about that. That being said, we'll play for food. The primary challenge of this show, the premise, yeah is we sh wherever we travel, whether it's in the U.S. mainland or internationally abroad, is we land in every destination without a dollar in our pockets. And we have to use our musical aptitude to feed ourselves, to survive. We will play for food. Whether that means, you know, getting busted by the police in Japan because we're trying to figure out, you know, I a good corner to play on. Potentially. You, you actually did. You got stopped by the police there, right? We did. And they said, you know, it's... This is cool, you know, you're not making, it's not bad music, but you can't play for money here on the sidewalks. So we said, okay, cool, like, we're sorry about that. Like, rewrite the plans. We think, well, we, re we actually reviewed the laws. If you can't play for money on the sidewalks, can we just play for food? Like, <laughs> yeah. that being said, with the help of a friend who spoke English, Japanese, we made a cardboard sign saying, we'll play for food. We don't want your money. We'll play for food. We went to Shibuya, we set that out, and before we know it, people are bringing us People bought food. you food, right? And that's oh, yeah. totally fine. <laughs> There's no money transaction. And the challenge changes wherever you go. Sometimes we're in small little towns where no one stops, where there is no one to play for. What do you do then? Do you go knock on someone's house and say, hey, will you, can we have dinner with you if we'll play you a couple songs, have a house concert? Or what if we're in a city where you know, there's really just kind of like sketchy, unsafe areas, but we have to somehow make that work? That being said, everywhere we go presents a new challenge, and it forces us to get creative with our music and with the people we interact with. And with hopefully through all of that, we were able to capture a raw, real, visceral image of the city or wherever we are and to like really can make that connection with our music, where we're at, and with the viewer. Is it fun? Oh, some, it's, it's fun. Sometimes it is genuinely, you know, the term reality TV is thrown around so willy-nilly here, yeah. but what we're doing is so genuinely real. Sometimes, my, my sweaty pits in some of those shots are genuinely <laughs> sweaty because I am so worried we're going to get busted or we're going to get jumped or everything's going to go down in flames and it's all on camera. 
And that, that actually is a reality. In fact, at one time, I think Jonathan had said before he'd sort of gotten together with all you guys that he got, he got jumped by somebody and took his money. That's correct. Here, actually, here in Waikiki, when he first, just months after moving here, played on the sidewalks, you know, he fell victim to it. He got just jumped in a complete freak random series of events, and he got knocked out, and it was a really rough time for him. He was considering not playing out in public ever again until, well, until he brought in, and, and you have a, a black belt of some kind, and, 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 I do. and so you were able to step in and, and did. be one of the enforcers. Then. Exactly. At the time, I was like, well, do you need me to be your security guard or your bandmate? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to fight when you have 25 pounds of accordion hanging off you, you know? But Well, that's uh, that's the other thing I was thinking. I mean, I can understand getting beat up because you have an accordion, but, I mean, he was... <laughs> exactly. It's was, it was crazy, I tell you. But, you know, and so that being said, though, like, we, we experience scenarios, like, maybe not as extreme as that, maybe so on these trips and uh -huh. so hopefully you know once the show drops like you can tune in and we want to give the viewer something to look forward to i mean because doing what we do like you really there really is no easy ticket out to these destinations it's always always a, hurdle always a to challenge jump over. yeah well i'm looking forward to see it you said again king five it starts up this fall september 27th did you uh, say 26th 26th wednesdays yes sir all right well that'll that'll be a fun show do we have we have a shot uh, of you know the full band on the beach there? I think it's one of their promotional shots. I don't know if we can pull that one up. I'd, and I think that one has Ben in it. Yes. Um, you know we'll we'll see if we can take a look at that. This is uh, the band. There you are. We'll play for food. So that's Jonathan, right? Yep. Ben, you, and Brian. That's correct. All right. And Brian plays the cello, but he he wears it. On that it all began also, that, that was an invention. A lot of the things that have, you see with us now have been products of us playing on the sidewalks in Waikiki. Brian playing the cello upright was primarily, he hated schlepping a chair with him down oh. to the sidewalks. <laughs> okay. Every night we performed, and we would do it almost every night, and he just hated having to bring a chair with him. So he did a little bit of R&D, figured out, you know, well, you know, a guitar strap can go here, one can go here. And before you know it, he's walking around playing a cello like it's no one's business. Yeah, well, I, I remember watching him show the kids at uh, Mid Pacific mm -hmm. and the orchestra there how to do that, and for the first time, them sort of walking around and playing their cello, and it, it was a, uh, it was quite an experience, I think, both for the kids, and also, yeah, you guys work wonderfully with kids. I think maybe that's because you're a little bit of kids yourself. Yeah, we're, we're brats. What can we say? <laughs> we have a little bit of growing up to do ourselves, but again, yeah, it's um, we've been fortunate that we've had a lot of great mentors and um, role models here in Hawaii, and. Ideally, as a band that's done that ourselves, we see nowadays, it's, we feel like that should be invoked more in the younger generations that you can do anything. Like, as long as you can visualize it if you want it, like, and you put a plan together, you know, you can make it happen. So hopefully we can teach these skills to those interested and they can just do something, they can go above and beyond anything they dreamed of. So to see kids doing it, like younger than yeah. us, it's just like, yes, you know, I've yet... I've seen one person pick up the accordion because of me. So oh, is I mean, that right? I'm, okay. I'm a little slower than the stand-up cello students, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working but there on aren't it. a lot of people teaching uh, accordion out here, I wouldn't think. It's un yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I used to be, I used to teach out here. Unfortunately, now most of my students have um, actually moved away. And, oh, yeah. well, I moved away, heck. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, when you look 10 years down the road, where do you hope you guys are? Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, I... I honestly, I just wanted, I would like to be where we are now, but on a bigger scale, hopefully. Um, what can I say? At the moment, I make a living doing what I love with some of my best friends. From, as a person, like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Yeah. Admittedly, I would love to maybe eventually st start being able to make enough to save up, maybe eventually get a house, support a family. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, just to develop our platform, develop our band, develop our sound, maybe play bigger shows and play around the world, make friends wherever we go, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully not, hopefully eventually rise above the poverty line as a musician. That would be <laughs> yeah. nice. That is where I want to be 10 years from now, above, above the, poverty the poverty line. Above the poverty line. I like that. That's a good goal. Upcoming shows? Where, where, where are you playing? Ooh, well, actually, August, uh, we're going to actually be on the road for a bit. We're, half yeah. of the month, we'll be up in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle and Portland. Um, but in the meantime, we have a slew of shows at Downtown Disney and Universal Studios. And you can find all of that on our Facebook, our Instagram, um, our Twitter. We'll have all the dates listed up so you can find it there. Perfect. When, when do we get you back here in Hawaii? Ooh, if everything works out, I do believe we'll be back 
for a week or two before September. We want to we wanna share a little hype. We may have a little launch party planned in store for our okay. friends and fans here. So nothing like a little shindig to kick off the TV show. How can they follow you? You mentioned Facebook, I assume, you know, oh, yep. Facebook pages, there's all kinds of uh, social media. A simple Google search of Streetlight Cadence will bring you up to our website, as well as our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, our newsletter. We want to make it as easy as possible to annoy you, so you can get in contact <laughs> okay. with us. <laughs> okay. And, and you're the one that runs all that, right? That is correct. That is, that is so all you... me. Okay. So if you write to us on any of those platforms, I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. All right. Streetlight Cadence. That's correct. And play, will play for food we'll play starting for up in uh, this September. Very exciting stuff. Thanks for coming, Jesse. My pleasure, Craig. Thank great you. Great seeing you. And uh, I hope that uh, next time when we got the whole band in, in town, we'll get all of you in here. Oh, boy. That would be fun. I can't wait. to get you to play us a tune. Hey, and that, unfortunately, brings us to the end of our show. Yeah, we've enjoyed having you with us on Community Matters as we discussed playing for food with our special guest, Jesse Shiroma. A street like Cadence. If you're wondering, now how can these guys possibly make me interested in hearing accordion music? Now's the time. Search to YouTube and listen to a few of their songs. There are certain people in this world you just want to see succeed, and wherever their talents and musical journey takes them, I'm confident the boys of Street Light Cadence are in for a lot of success. Look for their television series this fall on K5, and for those of you all tied into the, the social media scene, you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all kinds of other places. Now, if you want to see this show again, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com backslash thinktechhawaii. There you'll find a link to this show and many more just like it. As always, thanks so much to our studio staff and for all of you who have watched, care, and contribute to Think Tech Productions. My name is Craig Wagnall. Aloha.